Uh, Russo's stayed in observation mode since coming to this place. A lot of it's alien, and he's more or less just sat down at a table looking over the grimoire. <laughs> I, I'm going to say that that at, at some point you might have explored the, the tavern, and I'm going to say that maybe on a mantle somewhere uh, you might see some photos of Roxana with another man you can presume is husband boyfriend maybe husband uh handsome looking man and they seem there's uh there's several pictures um of this other person with them who could be their child uh because you can see that the uh pictures have a progression of the child aging from a little boy uh, a boy that's actually around uh almost balen's age almost uh, all the way up to a teenager. Um, so you can make whatever presumptions you want to make as you're pouring over this book. And I'm going to say that, you know, maybe Roxana walks up to him with a picture of something. I don't know. It's up to you. Or, yeah, I I was actually going to approach him because they're all in my bar. I imagine at some point I would make sure that everyone's eaten, that they've been tended to. I'll get uh, Aika set up with uh, uh, Rosie, make sure she's okay. Um, and then lastly, I will, with a, a sandwich on plate in one hand and a glass of water in the other, I will walk up to Russo um, and I'll kind of clear my throat a little bit to get his attention. <clears throat> I promise it's water. You can even smell it before you drink it if you want. I'd say when you uh, say hit him, he wasn't really paying attention, so his ears kind of perk a little bit, then he turns around. Oh. Um... Sure, why not? I'll hand it to him. Penny, for your thoughts. Uh, it's. I'm not going to say this is normal, but what has been? <laughs> yeah, it's kind of been a rough day for you guys. Uh, you've seen a little bit, though. I don't know. I think everyone's overwhelmed, but you just seem tired. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I thought you could use a bit of food, to be honest. I, eh, keen eye. Oh, I'm not really tired, per se. Just, um, a little spent, mentally speaking. Real bad one. <laughs> now, you guys all look like you've been through the ringer. Where were you for all this? Uh, well, if we're going to go through the nit and gritty, I started this whole escapade going from Navarro with my son. A circus went bad, and then things kind of escalated to where we're hunting five ancient demons. Well, four now. Wow. I've got your work cut out for you. <laughs> well, look. You're here for the time being until we get your friends sorted. So just make yourself comfortable. And look, we're pretty good people. I know my friend freaked out when you before, but we honestly mean no harm. Yeah, bit of an overreaction on our end, too. <laughs> These things too tend to happen. We did something similar a couple of months ago. And, uh, yeah, you should have seen that shit show. <laughs> These uh, years pointing to the book on the table. I see, like pointing to the photos and shit. Yeah, to the scrapbook. Yeah, there's like a, and the, she has a lot of photos like proudly displayed, and she kind of smacks. Yes, that's um, that's my husband Aika and uh, my son. He met. Hmm. How do your, uh, well, I don't really need to say, but did you always have help raising him? <laughs> I'm sorry. Your, uh, your son. Well, yeah, um, he's, uh, he's adopted, uh, me and uh, Aika who came in when, when we were very young ourselves, <laughs> barely out of high school. But yeah, uh, 
we had a lot of help. We needed it for them. Not that he's a bad kid. He's my no, friend no. enjoyed it, but from the pictures he seems fine. Yeah. He just has a pension for stealing cars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's a bit of a Stealing what? <laughs> I feel like technically he still has to report to his parole. Oh yeah, he's he, he served he served time in jail, and so he's still <laughs> yeah. He's but he's still living with you. It's just he's still under uh, the the eye of the government. So anyway, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, a, a car. It's it. Uh, I suppose the equivalent would be like a uh, a carriage. Oh, uh, like or like a, a wagon. Car. Yeah, but it drives itself. Oh, well, you drive it, but you don't have a horse pulling it. Hmm. Well, I hope my boy doesn't do that when he gets older. You have kids? Uh, I have one. That's um, like a son, daughter, like Yeah, a, yeah. Gender fluid. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as, as far as I know right now, he's a boy. <laughs> I, I know, I was about to transition to that. Uh... You know what, I'm not really doing a good job describing it, so, um, and he'll pull out his little hand mirror. You'll take a look at it, and, um, I'm gonna say as soon as, I think Russo technically has to be holding it as I'll, he I'll, thinks I'll just about- i holding it while she looks at it. <laughs> sure. And he thinks about, uh, his son, and so, the way I describe this as a character is if you ever watch Disney's Beauty and the Beast, it's basically <laughs> yes. like, show me the beast! Ah. <laughs> so anyway. But this time it's like, show me my son. And you actually see uh, this adorable little boy. Uh, and he seems to be uh, uh, wielding some sort of fire magic right now. He uh, clearly is being trained by a woman, beautiful looking woman, all in violet. Um, and he seems to be like manipulating a very, very basic like fire magic right now. <laughs> He's a uh, beautiful, uh, takes after his mother. She says, pointing to the boy, who I'm assuming is Violetta. Um, she's she she's not mother. his um, blood mother. <laughs> oh, is he related to you? Uh, no, no, I, uh, I adopted him when I was 21 under very questionable circumstances. You didn't steal him, did you? <laughs> not... Technically, I mean, if you want the nitty gritty, <laughs> my brother kind of killed his parents. Oh. Okay. Um, well, <laughs> sorry, I'm not good at this sort of thing. I mean, neither am I. Everyone just keeps coming to me about this stuff. <laughs> uh, well, you know, it, it's a uh, it's a noble thing that you. Giving a, a child a second chance. Yeah, it was hard for a bit, mainly because I was just pretty alone doing it. But things have been shaping up. I guess the only real kind of regret I have about it is I didn't really make the person responsible pay. Your brother, you mean? Yeah. I feel that one. Look, if I, if I may be so forward as to offer some advice, it, it's hard to uh, make the right call when it's somebody you love. Sometimes, sometimes you have to put loyalty to the base side to do what's right. I know I have to. I'm not saying kill him by any means. Perhaps bring him to justice. Yeah. Well, um, if I were to be completely honest, the major reason I didn't kill him was I didn't want to hurt myself more. Yeah. Maybe that's the defense. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, look, people are always going to, to do things out of your control. The best thing you can do is try and make the world a better place to fight that. You know what you did that for your for your son. You gave him a home. 
the way I see it, you kind of corrected your brother's mistake. Not all of us can say that. I... I suppose you're right. It's just... I don't think I can really properly say it right. But I've been wondering how good of a person I really am when I know deep down I didn't save him for benevolent reasons or so that he could face just proper, just so that he wouldn't hurt my position later. Well, let me... Sorry. What, 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 what was your name? I don't uh, think I it. Oh, how rude of me. Uh, Russo. Russo, it's nice to meet you. You can call me Roxanne. Russo, let me ask you this. Do you love your son? Follow my heart. Would you do anything for your son? Yeah. Then you're a good dad. Okay? And she'll, she'll put a, her hand on his shoulder. You're a good dad. Thanks. Parents fuck up all the time. I know I did. Uh, well, Violet has been teaching him right. He'll have this guardian thing down in no time. So who is this Violet anyway? She's not his mother. Why is he with her? Uh, <laughs> so let me just start this little preface. Magic's not really a thing that everyone has back home. Oh, I mean, to be rather perfectly blunt, because of the relationship it comes from, uh, demons and spirits is what generates it. Okay, so ghosts make magic, all right. It's technically. Okay. So... To balance out that fix, there's five people that are more attuned to the elements that can grant basically different things lacking in the ether and I found out my son's the second coming of the Fire Guardian. The last one passed over ten years ago. It, it kind of like starts to resonate with her, and she kind of knows. Did you have to send him? I never planned to, but I knew I'd be a hypocrite because I'd sworn by the circle and everything else before. Very sorry, but you know, it's very, uh, very scary for a young mind that they don't understand what they. Yeah. This might be a good thing. You can see him, yes? You can see him whenever you want. Right? To answer your other question, that uh, woman's Violetta, she took up the mantle of Fire Guardian when the oh. first one passed. Oh. And we've we've kind of been seeing each other. Oh, oh all right. Yeah, okay. <laughs> she, um, this is the first time Roxana's kind of done this. Um, as she gets older, her medical Omega's abilities aren't so crazy. But for a brief minute, her ears kind of jut out in a point, but then they walk back down. Um, but she doesn't seem to notice it. She's like, oh, I see. So you and uh, this Violetta, you know, trying it on, you know. <laughs> Going steady. Ah. Uh. Well, your your face does a very bad job of masking that. So you're dating, basically. You know, yes, know. yes, you're dating. <laughs> uh, she looks pretty. She likes purple. That's a good taste. I like the color purple. Yeah. I've uh, been a little bit of a trouble to be with someone so refined, but it's been a goal. You know... <laughs> You're kind of, I know the way you're talking about this relationship, you're almost fine. <laughs> She's that bad. I'm sorry, that was cut out, man. <laughs> oh, sorry. She, she's like, oh, when you're talking about this relationship, you're kind of almost fine. Is she that bad? Like she's making a, a jerk. <laughs> that was a joke. Yeah. No, no, I, I get it. No, no, she's great. She's probably been the best thing that's happened in a long time. It's just, I don't really know how to talk about things anymore. I spent so long shut in to where it's never natural. Oh, okay. Well, here's some advice. Just, just get it out, you know? You'll probably never 
see each other again after this. I'm just a, a statue. <laughs> Unload. Go on. She's great. My son's great, and we've already got a plan set up. It's just one thing that's been a struggle for me is there's a little bit of a gap between me and her. She's uh, nine years older than me, which means she couldn't have more children of her own. She can't have children. Yeah. And she, I... Uh, I, I just feel beyond lost because I don't know what it's like to be a mage and I don't know what it's like to have that taken from you. Um, well, it's, um, it, it wouldn't be easy for her if, if she wants kids. <laughs> um, she kind of pauses between her words as if like really trying to think about what she's going to say. For people like this, uh, it, it's tough. It's really tough. The best you can do is cherish what you have because that is a, a special, beautiful thing. I, I have the same problem. I can't have children here. But I have a med and I have my husband. We have such a wonderful life. Just cherish what you have. You know? I think your problem is you, you worry too much. You're too concerned about how things are going to work out. You know, things are going to happen. Just enjoy life. You have a beautiful son, and she's gorgeous. Enjoy that. Stop worrying so much. Loosen up. <laughs> I'll, I'll have to keep that in mind. You're welcome. Anyway, enjoy the sandwich. It's going well. It's not fresh anymore. Eat it, for God's sake. <laughs> uh, before I go, you said you this this is a bar, right? This is a bar. We have alcohol. Uh, we Russo, some alcohol. Russo will pull out his flask. Have you ever had Navarin brandy? She kind of like leans back like that. I can't say I have. We don't have a Navarre here, but we do have brandy. And I am partial to it. So if you would be so kind. I would love to try something. Well, I can get more. You can't. That is... Are you going to give me that whole flask? He'll give you the whole flask. You take the flask. Are you going to Are you gonna try a sample? She's going to smell it. And she's gonna You're going to smell sip. it. And it's got... So first of all, the way that it smells. So it's almost got like a spiciness to it. You oh. feel, And you feel like, oh, Aika and Aika's mom would totally like this. Because it's got... It's definitely smells like it's got you know like nutmeggy all spicy kind of a perfume to it and then you take a drink and you've had a, your share of alcohol of course if, uh, because of the bar but this is definitely unlike anything you've tried before i'm not gonna say it's necessarily like the favorite thing you've ever drunk before but it's so unique and it's so out of this world which makes sense because it doesn't exist in this world that you're like, dude, this is some good stuff. Like, this is some really good stuff. She kind of like smacks her lips together when she tries it. It's like, this is fucking awesome. What is that fucking num nutmeg? This is brandy? I don't know if you've ever had mead before, but mead is made from honey. Yeah. And so it's not exactly mead, but it's sort of like, think of a, a combination of mead and brandy and like a, and like spiced apple cider. So think that all three of those things <laughs> combine together to form this drink. That's what the brandy tastes like. She's like, oh, this is, this is like one of the greatest days of my life. I've never had brandy this good, although it, it's not hard to beat brandy. <laughs> but uh, and she'll screw up the floss. She's like, "Well, now I got to give you something. I I had planned for this, you know." Jesus, let me look at my inventory. <laughs> she'll go through a bag and she'll pull out. Was that she's like, oh god, I don't know. <laughs> she like is going through her purse. Shit's flying out of it. She's going. 
Mass killing curse. Mass killing curse. Mass uh, killing. Too bad I forgot that part. Uh-huh. <laughs> Take she, keys work as well. She goes through it and she's like, oh my god, I didn't even know these were in here. She pulls out some stink pellets, which have been there since high school. And she's like, holy shit. This could, this could kill somebody. Use it wisely. <laughs> She'll give um, him all of those stink pellets. He'll just slowly grab him. Thanks. It's a stink pellet. You throw it, stinky stuff happens. But they've been in there for like 20 years. It could combust. Pneumonia in a bottle. Got it. You're welcome. Now eat that sandwich. Leon, I'm going to say that, uh, again, trying in the interest of time. So Rosie, again, has been out like a light this whole time and so you get to meet Aika at some point he arrives and he's you know carefully uh, having uh, Rosie drink in her sleep uh, the Skelligro and he's going to warn you that Skelligro is actually a very regrowing and bones is a painful process he says just as an FYI so she probably will have some massive discomfort during this whole thing so just, you know, I would recommend being there for her, you know, and so, um, but I will definitely give her something that will allow her to continue sleeping so that it's not as bad. And so after that, you'll, you definitely will see like, you know, Rosie squirm and wince in pain um, as the potion is presumably working. And so um, it probably makes more sense for Juan to come to this back room like maybe he's looking for something from Aika of some sort and because yeah they're basically in they're basically in, in in a bedroom of some sort so maybe you're like looking for Aika for something but then you run into you run into um, Leon and his well female friend on the bed and you notice that she's in pain you can tell you can tell it's a Skelligro potion but go ahead. Juan will approach Leon and say, uh, don't worry too much about your friend. She'll get, she'll get better in no time. Ah, uh, man, this seems very um, uncomfortable, I guess. What's in that potion? Uh, I've never been very good at my uh, potions class, but there's a whole lot of uh, magical herbs. I think some super magical horrors. Not of kelpies. I hate kelpies. Wow. Ugh. Sounds like your <laughs> world is more populated than ours of different creatures. Uh, yeah, yeah, um, definitely. We have sirens, uh, griffins, obviously. Um, like, bad. There's. I begin to tell you how many magical animals we have. And of course, non magical as well. Yeah, we have dragons as well, but ours are not so. Like it's dangerous. They are dangerous, but they're like zoos for dragons, so. Oh, interesting. Yeah, um, we didn't have dragons up till recently, and they've been causing quite the ruckus. I can imagine. Uh, <laughs> in fact, the we middle can turn days. Dragons. <laughs> wait, wait, you can turn into dragons? Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> We can all sort of, yeah, one of those types of things, magic and the like. Oh, I'm not part yet. We're gonna need a lot of CGI to do that. Oh, um, yeah, we all sort of join hands and turn into a ginormous dragon and can fly basically across like all the stages. Yeah, it's, you know, hi, dragoon. Well, that's 
the movie is gonna turn out quite different than I imagine now. Yeah, gosh, how is it? I mean, not to sound too narcissistic, but um, no. how is it playing well me from a you know purely outsider's perspective? From an outsider's perspective, I have to say that your character is quite an interesting one. When I was I I was like I can identify with you for a bit, to be honest. When I was young. I mean the idea of like a good or a decent blood mage in the lore we knew was kind of surreal, but you you are. I mean, is there uh, really such a thing as a good blood mage? <laughs> At least that's, you know. But I, I get you. And I mean, at least from my perspective, you know, offsetting it with healing or, well, maybe not controlling others, but in some aspect we have to. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. We have to fight out against the Magister Sidereals. <laughs> I don't suppose you guys have anything for that. I mean, we have tons, tons of stuff to, to kill here, but I don't know. <laughs> well, um, there's there's something I don't know if we are allowed to. You see, I think it's fair that I tell you a bit about me, because I am playing you after all. Yeah, please. A actually a, a few years back, like ten years ago, something like that. There was a big war here in uh, I don't know. <laughs> In, in our world, it's non mages against mages. We we had to stop it, you know. So, my friend Roxana, she created something that ended the war. Oh, I mean, that seems useful it was it ended like i said the war ended soon after it, its implementation but i after seeing back to like right now years after using it i wish we hadn't made it we made she made of course, an almost all powerful course, keep killing hundreds or thousands of people with one cast. Oh, oh, we call it the mass killing curse. Wow, I guess that is one way to end the war. It's not a very kind way. It's not... You all thought it was necessary in the moment, you know? A big show of strength. A, a powerful way to show them that the war was not worth fighting. But now that it's made, couldn't be replicated and well, used against you. In this world, there are only three people that know of it. Roxana, Albion, and myself. We learned it together, and we made an unbreakable vow. We can't teach to other people or 
I guess that's one way to keep a secret. That's okay. <laughs> we do things in, the, in this world. We go big or go home. <laughs> but look, I have to tell you, if you have a problem of that kind and by reading the book, it seems you guys have murder and violence is it's not a solution that will it will work i'm not saying it won't because wanted or not violence finds a way to work always but they it takes a toll on you a really big toll if you can find any way to I know, maybe not a pacifist solution, but one that does not require murder. I would strongly suggest to that. <laughs> I would like to find a way without, you know, killing another human being that, well, you know, morally wrong, but I do not see a way without ending these sidereals. They're going to just keep killing keep causing chaos in our world they've for hundreds of thousands of years they've destroyed the world around them they've caused blights they've corrupted everything they touch there's there's a reason why people say that our god has abandoned us the maker has abandoned us I mean, not to say that ending them would be morally right, but it is the, the correct option to save more suffering. Maybe it is. I wish I could help, but I cannot teach you the end of our war. I can only hope you guys can find your own way. Because I, I don't think I can give you guys a tank. If there's too little time to ask for one, and like it's too big, I don't think it can fit in the library. A tank? Is that like a, um, a spell? Oh no, no, no. I'll be back. Roxana had this crazy idea. I thought it was stupid, but it was not. Uh, Juan will go and take out his cell phone and like show you a picture of Hank in workings and like boom, boom. So like she said, hey, let's take a couple of tanks to go kill Pete, to go kill uh, Fendrick Greyback. And we were all like, Roxana, that's stupid. But she asked for it and they fucking worked. You Whoa. Know? Oh it's, my goodness. It's a, I still feel stupid for saying that she was wrong. I mean, I guess we'll have to get a few of those. Gosh. I mean, if you can, if we, I mean, I could make them small, put a, put, put a, like a time limit, and give you like a couple tanks. Ooh. I, I'll, 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 I'll rest on that. That's that's a good plan. <laughs> Or give it a magic word like big whale <laughs> or something like that. I'll give you, I can and also I, give you a big whale. I still have that goldfish room I want to do. You guys turn into a big whale out of that way. It would just be called big tank. It'd just be like big tank. Big and tank. Then, Here's a big <laughs> tank. <laughs> and you get your tank. Wow. And we gotta make sure that Tosh can take one back to the Kune as, you know, a, a research project. It's uh, <laughs> required there. And then also give it to every other nation so we can just, you know, Mass the destruction levels. Yeah, tanks. Tanks sound very, very cool. They they could help your war. Let's be real here. This is here. This is the final Dragon Age of the of the trilogy. So I you can, I you can f up the whole. <laughs> like, I'll give you a fucking nuclear bomb, man. Yeah, fuck it. Let's give the nukes. <laughs> Oh man! Mark is like, oh god, another final boss is gonna die instantly. <laughs>
Wow. Does it run on magic or how? Uh, yeah, that's that would be a problem. Uh, it runs. I think the level of technology you guys have would be. I mean, I could get you more guns if that's what you need. Like, if one gun is good, I just we can cop on quick to America, just buy a couple SMGs, and I mean, that's like the gun, but better. You know, it fires mm. more faster. Yeah, I can give you guys guns. Like, I can just go to Walmart. It can't be that hard. Oh, man. What, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm gonna get... Wow, that'd be that'd be excellent. But the one oh, thing maybe, I do maybe... worry about is yeah. if we bring something to our world, the the how do we keep it contained so that you know it doesn't start a, a war about I technology? Don't think you guys have. I mean, I guess I I think reading. I I really like this guy's the. Uh, they seem like they can keep things in check, so you can just give it to them. Oh, okay. I mean, sounds I mean, good. After you, after you kill Clara, you need to keep the guns to the Templars. I mean, I mean, but Templars are, how should I put it, uh, very uh, conservative in their viewpoints, as in uh, anything new or magical should be um, uh, destroyed or contained. And I mean, wouldn't that be good so that the gun doesn't proliferate in your world? Uh, but you know, just or, or the did you idea. want that? Well, you know, Templars plus blood mages don't mix. So if if oh, I were that's to give probably, them, that's that's probably you should not give, you should not give guns to the Templars. Yeah. That's probably smart. Maybe we should have like a hey. self destruct feature. So you press the button and it. Itself. And they just clean up. Hey, that's not a bad idea. We should probably bring this up to the rest of your group if they want some tanks, if they want some guns. I mean, I'm a big name. Probably get you guys something. Okay. I mean, yeah, sounds good. And then the other thing I wanted to <laughs> talk about was um, you know, your acting career. You you make a living out of, you know, pretending to be someone else, right? Yeah. Could you like, yeah. give me a That's few not... pointers on, well, how to uh, make friends and influence enemies? Oh. Well, you're asking the right I was a spy during uh, a moment of my life. A spy? Man. So you must have been like, a, like an Antivan crow then, right? If I remember my lore correctly, yeah. Um, well... Um, the best to, to lie is to not lie, actually. Always sprinkle a bit of the truth so that if they look into it, they will find uh, the truth there. And most of the time, they will be satisfied by that. Keep, uh, yeah, lie honestly. <laughs> and that's... That's the best way to do it. And you know the the saying, keep your friends close and your enemies closer. Oh man. Do you happen to have any spells that could help? Like um I mean, I am a master on transfiguration. I can change the way I look and the way everything is with a flick of my wrist here. Uh, he will cast a Transfigurate and change himself to the Brandon Carr persona. Uh, <clears throat> this is the I used back when I was a spy. Amazing. <laughs> and he will transform back. Uh, that was very useful. The, the, the question I would have, I, I would teach you that because I think it would be very useful for you, but I use mana. I don't know how that would... I, I, I'm not really sure how we make magic in my world and how it translates to yours. I can't teach you uh, the mass killing curse, but I can try and teach you some transfiguration if it will help. Yeah, that'd be most excellent. 
Uh, and yeah, Juan will try and teach them some transfiguration magic. Brandon, I'm sorry, I didn't know you fucking stole from this pill. I can say, oh, oh yeah, he stole it. <laughs> I... Roll a transfiguration roll, please, Juan and Leon. Roll a magic. Is there a school for under creation? For there's um, like beasts. You know, you can turn into like bears and the like. Probably creation or primal or maybe a mix. Yeah, I think that's also under primal too. Creation. So or a tree. Okay, and go ahead, Leon. Uh, nineteen with six Ooh. stunt points for creation magic. Okay, so I'm going to say that. Again, there's a limited amount of time, but I'm going to say that you can effectively transform yourself into another human being. Oh. But you can only maintain that for like it depends on your on your creation role. Okay. And that'll determine minutes how long you're able to dragon die maybe. I think minutes equal to the dragon die. So it's a limited it's only for a limited amount of time and I should specify that it doesn't change your voice. So you still need to probably roll a roll to have a convincing voice. And it obviously doesn't, like, give you any, like, information about the person. It's just, I can make myself look like somebody else. Okay. Human, though. No dwarf, no Kinari, no another human. Okay. Sounds so, groovy. Gender could be male or female. So. Mm -hmm. If he's ever with Rosie, at some point, Roxana would actually go in to check on her. Okay. Um, make sure, like... Everything's all good. And then how we like how we bump into each other by accident, as we're yeah, yeah. <laughs> the classic yeah, like the oh, 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 uh, sorry, miss. Uh, apologies for that. That's all right. You nearly walked right through oh. me. Ah, oh, I, I was just watching. I was too focused on the patient. Um, ah, uh, uh, excuse me. Uh, uh, you're all right. It's okay. Calm oh down. my God! Thank you. At least um, you're friend has been doing quite a lot of help um, on her, so I'll even oh. <laughs> That's my husband, not my friend. Oh! oh, oh. <laughs> my, my apologies. <laughs> my, my apologies. He gives, a, he, gives us, he gives like a bow that looks... He just gives like a long, deep bow. I, I, apologies. Um, it's, That's okay. It's all right. Like, How is she doing, by the way? She okay? Uh, I, I think she's okay. I'm I'm more afraid if she can still do movement. Um she was pretty hurt bad. Um and I just hope you can still walk and move around. I mean she can still do that, but you know, makes you worry. You know, when a person loses uh, parts of his limbs, um so you can say it's dangerous. Yeah, I don't know. I I get it. Are you a, a doctor? Um, I'm sort of a doctor, you can say. Oh, it's a very long. It's a very long story. Technically, I have no license as a doctor, but I'm skilled as a doctor. It's, it's a very. Oh, I see. I see. You're one of them illegal ones. Okay. <laughs> what? No, 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 I'm not illegal. I'm just. I'm one who helps people and very talented at actually doctor work. Uh, stitching and bending she's like, and all that. She's like smacking as he kind of goes, like, oh, no, 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 wait. <laughs> she's just like, going, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Right. Uh, very well. Um, actually, uh, as What are you guys even doing that got her like this? Um, we were in a fight uh, with a... With a... No kidding. Yeah. Um, and, well... Was a big creature grabbed um, both legs and arm, or something like that, I believe, if I remember correctly, and pulled on both sides, force coming from both sides. Um, could have pulled his, could have pulled her spine. You look yeah. very tired. You should take a break. Tired. <laughs> Uh, I don't think I, I don't think I'm tired. I'm just just a lot has happened in the past two days. Well, you're the, you're the bartender, right? I, have, I do have a bar. Why do you want to drink? If that's not a problem, um, 
I feel like I might need one. <laughs> um, a lot has happened in the past few days, let's just say that. I know, I know doctors okay. shouldn't be intoxicated on a job, but at the moment I think she'll be okay. Look, I promise you, Aiker is very good at the things he does. It's fine. I, I don't think you're needed right now. Well, she kind of like realizes she says something like that could be kind of insulting. She's like, I mean, you know what I mean. You're on the yeah. block. Yeah, yeah. Have a drink. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. He's going to take a seat. Uh, are you leaving to the bar? Um, yeah, like she quit. She's not. She doesn't take her. She quickly yeah. ducks out. She'll probably because they all look kind of fantasy. Mm -hmm. She like is looking at the, the back of the bar, going, "Oh God, what do people from Lord of the Rings drink?" Uh, <laughs> she, she's like, she's like going through it, and she's like, she's like, "Mead, excellent." And she actually like brings back a cup of like mm -hmm. mead or ale, like it's like a, it's like, like an old old timey like 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 fantasy mead. Yeah, it's in a mug. It's in a tank card and everything. Like, sort of, this is a team cocktail, so enjoy. He sort of looks at it. Well, at least it's. I mean, he drinks. <laughs> oh, I haven't had meat in a while. I generally drink wine or nothing. Oh, what? Well, I'm. <laughs> we do have wine if you prefer that. But, oh, no, it's. That's. Because you know, if a... you're get up, I thought this might be appropriate. <laughs> oh, this. Uh, we all have our own particular tastes, um, so yeah. Generally, it's either tea, wine, anything that gets me up, you know, and and energizes me. You can say. And sort of when you kind of take it. Yep. Mm -hmm. oh, sorry. No, go 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 ahead. Go ahead. She she takes a, a seat across from him and she's kind of mm -hmm. like scratching like the edge of the door a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You all uh, seem a little bit worn out. Yeah. It's just been... In our world, I guess, it's just been a couple of days and... Things have happened. Many things. Uh, I'm even, even... And even I'm very worn out to the point where... Um, I'm, I'm very unsure of myself. It seems like you're putting a lot of... Pressure on yourself. Sorry, I'm probably assuming. No, Sorry. you're 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 right. I'm. Something happened to me that I'm. I'm putting a lot of pressure on myself. You can say, putting a lot of guilt. Um, just to be honest, it's true. But. Okay, reel it back a second. Shit happens. Okay. I... <laughs> Me and my friends, we'd ha we've had a, a go at it. And you can sit there and blame yourself all you want. Mm. Suddenly this attitude makes a lot more sense. Uh, <laughs> but you can sit there and blame yourself all you want, because, honestly, blaming yourself is a little bit easier. Because then it's like, there's a solution. Mm. But it's not your fault. I can see just looking at you, you're trying your best. It's not your fault. I don't know. To a certain degree it is my fault, but also... It, it's a very weird world. Uh, a very weird coincidence what I did, but... Just... <sighs> it's put a lot of weight on me. My group now, I'm not so sure how they look at me. I'm, I mean, some of them probably don't knew what was going to happen. And it's like, no one... no one could help me. Mm. I... I killed my master in cold blood. Master as a... I'm a slave. Was a slave. No, I... Uh, I get that. <laughs> and we... We've all, uh... We've all had to do things, or felt like we had to do things to protect people. I know I've done a lot of questionable things, so... <laughs> You're not feeling... I mean, look, I don't know what your uh, arrangement mm. with uh, this particular thing is like, where you come from, but... Where, where we come from, this place... The people here who were pushed down, 
they really pushed that. And I've seen it firsthand. I, I come from one of those families that did that shit. Mm. So forgive me for assuming, but it sounds like this guy had it coming. I don't disagree with you. It's just I would have... Murder was not on my mind. I, I wanted to do something better, but instead I let my emotions run. Uh, uh, and my fear, and, and what I'm afraid, is more of my group. Pro they probably don't care, but they could have done something, but they didn't. Not, not that I fault them for, because I wouldn't listen. Let me tell you something. A long time ago, in this place, and you've probably heard us mention it from time to time. Mm. There was a, a war between two factions. Mm. From what I understand, your world has magic. Pretty much. Here, we obviously have magic, but I can see that. Imagine if, imagine if nobody knew that magic existed, and there's the normal people, and then there's us. And then one day they found out. It didn't go well, mm. hence the war. Uh, we all participated in certain ways, except for me. And when an old friend needed help, and her voice kind of gets quiet after a minute, when an old friend needed help, mm. I uh, turned them away. Because I didn't want to get involved. I didn't want to pick a side. It didn't feel like my place. and I didn't want to die. I just, <laughs> I just wanted to move on. And finally get to a place where I was happy. He ended up getting killed. And here's the problem. Because I, I haven't told anybody this, but... I blame myself for it. Kind of like what you're doing now. And, you know, if it's your fault, if it's for sure your fault, then yeah, I get that. But you can sit there and blame yourself, or you can think, how can I learn from this mistake? I don't sit on the sidelines anymore. I try not to. I try to be rational. For my kids, for my friends, mm. for the people I love. Just when people are telling you things, just listen for a minute. Because the world doesn't, and not saying you're being selfish, but the world doesn't revolve around simply what you see and what you do. There's other people involved. <laughs> he chuckles. I haven't been, I mean, I've been told that I'm selfish enough times, so I know. I'm. I don't think you are, or at least, if you are, I don't think you mean to be. You'd be a pretty shit doctor if you were so. No, oh, my a friend, I chose to be a doctor, I wanted to be one, and my friend tells, and one of my companions tells me that even though a doctor by choice in helping people, that's being selfish because you're trying to help people. I'm... Of course that's a bitch, and you're not always gonna know what's right. Yeah. The best you can do is take the lessons from these mistakes and and see what you can do from then on out. You're never going to know if what you're doing is right, but if you look at all the evidence, everything around you, yeah. you can put that into something productive. This is like the most profound thing I've ever said, but... <laughs> <laughs> I've heard a lot of profound things. Um, actually, there is one question. I. You, you, this world is all about ma has full of magic, and that there are these two factions. Is is magic really that useful? Other than like, I know it's has its uses, but I my father he has a mark represents uh, some he was tranquil. I. 
my theory is he was once a mage. If magic is so good and and all that, why him? I know he escaped from my master, wanted well, freedom. I'm just curious to listen from your side of the story, how magic is like here. I'm very sorry to hear that about your dad. <sighs> I can't do much for him. Sometimes there's nothing you can do. But be there. Look, here, we had a choice where we could bring magic to everybody. And I think it improved things here because, you know, <laughs> people die every single day. Even even wizards die every single day. But, yeah. <laughs> magic helps lessen that effect. It's it's got amazing healing properties. You can do almost anything with the babe of a hat, but just as magic is very useful here, it's also very dangerous. Same with our world. I my, can only imagine. <laughs> my, my friend, he points at the redhead kid. He's a healer mage. Good one, I can see. He's young. Young. A little bit young and I don't know something else about him that I like. I, I care for him, just as everyone else in this group. I'm just afraid of magic. I guess it's use. It, I don't see it as bad. I just my own my own father got uh, got chain or got lost his entire emotions because he learned it. Or he has it. I don't know. It, it, maybe I'm just being emo too emotional on that. No, you're not. I lost my dad to magic too. A different way. Sometimes, look, sometimes people uh, are the way they are, and you can't help that. And uh, from what I can see in your world, people can't help that they can do these things. Magic, that is. Mm. I know. Ma magic should be feared. If I'm being honest with you, that's probably not comforting to hear, but it should be, because it can do many terrible things, just as it can do many good things. Depends on the user, right? Exactly. And that's that's what you need to remember. You can be apprehensive around magic. There, there's nothing wrong with that. It's, mm. It can be quite horrific, some of the things you can do with it. You just need to remember it does depend on the user. Before, before you judge, you get to know that. From what I can see, your, your friend, your young friend, he's very... Uh, Chipper, I think is the best word to describe him. <laughs> Quite chipper, let's say that. Sometimes yeah. he gets into some weird, tr weird trouble that we have to pull his ass out sometimes, but it happens. That happens. And he's the youngest, so... Yeah. But, but, ah, right, bartender, you know things. <laughs> I always forget that people know the, these kinds of things, <laughs> first by a look. <laughs> What's your name? Never got us. Roxanne. Tyrion. It's nice to meet you, Terry. You're a good doctor, and a good man, and, and people you... make mistakes. And you're a good bartender. Thanks for the chat. I try to be. <laughs> Let me know if you need another, but uh, if you go back on the clock, cutting you off. Yeah, I, I, I can keep my limit. I can keep it. All right. All right. I got to go check back storage to make sure my nephew didn't sneak in there again. <laughs> un un understandable. Nice kid. He is a very good kid. I will be seeing you later, Karen. See you later, Roxanne. She will go. Right. And he'll send her drinking. Nice. You guys have had a chance to sort of chat with each other a little bit. 
And I'm going to say that you're all in the bar, the main bar area again. Rosie's has seems to have stopped whatever, you know, switching she's had. Temporarily for right now, it seems like it stopped. So she's still sound asleep. And uh, the, the TV set uh, shows some, some of the local news. And apparently in the local news, there seems to have been a series of uh, missing children cases in the last week. So mysteriously, some children have been disappearing around town, this neighborhood. Um, and one of the leads that they have is that the children were last spotted typically at this very specific playground. So they're not necessarily sure if this is something mundane related or magically related. But, you know, the the... The whole piece is showing like several people in the neighborhood. Broxana probably recognizes a few of these people, and you probably might have met some of the kids themselves. So oh, this might be hitting, so you might be hit. This might be hitting you close to home. Um, and she's like, I I don't know what happened. I don't know where where my my son Mahmoud is or blah 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 blah. Please, if you can see, so she's got like a portrait. If you if you see him, please call us, contact us. And so I definitely yeah. got the portraits in my bar as well. I, yeah. So, um, so yeah, there's these reports of these missing children, and so far nobody has any idea yet, like what's, like who's doing this or what's behind this. But if anybody has information, to call like the call the authorities. So, I suspect a hag is responsible for this, Callisto. What did you do? Oh, Oh my God. I I am innocent until proven guilty. <laughs> Speak to my lawyer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right now. And there's nothing we can do to prove it. Well, the lawyer's drunk right now, so I don't know. I don't think he's a. <laughs> I, I don't know if we're even had alcohol. Rox gave me water, you ass. <laughs> not, not you. Not you. If we're all like in the general area, she's kind of like cleaning up after everyone's like eating and have a drink. And she'll just like kind of look up at the TV and she's like, damn shame that one. It was for good kids. Nobody knows what happened. Like just kind of starting a conversation. That's not well, too far from here, is it? No, it's not. It walking kind distance, of, actually. What, we, what kind we of monster is all... your child? Good question. But uh, we should all transfigure ourselves into children go there and try to get kidnapped and find where they are. Luke, I told you about this like a week ago, and we're only coming up with this brilliant plan now. God damn it, you're you so smart. You let me drink vodka a week ago. Well, so you're, you're saying, still not allowed. <laughs> so you're saying we should go investigate, right? Yeah, it could be. Fun. Always. You got time to kill. It'll also give me a good chance to explore this world, he sort of. Jots some more things down in his notebook. Taryn just looks at, it, uh, at like the moving picture TV. Uh, <laughs> he's just uh, sipping from his cup. From his cup. Oh my god! All the uh, all the Harry Potter cast transfigured to like how they look like in the first arc. Are you guys trying to? Uh, is that what you're doing? Yes. You're transfiguring yourself? We're all gonna go. We're all gonna look like kids. We're all gonna try to be <laughs> children and wait to be. <laughs> <laughs> What? <laughs> <laughs> Have you been Look, on the internet again? Geez. Look, what's the thing? Look, me and Torrin have been drinking a lot. <laughs> Just give me a second. No. I don't know if I can include this on the, my YouTube channel. I, don't think. I feel like I'm gonna get banned. Just to the bleed of that. The censor bug is gonna have a field day on this session. <laughs> Just re say it, Brandon. Censor yourself. Okay, so, check it. Cut it out. Cut it out. <laughs> Who's your employer again, Brandon? <laughs> like, <I don't> know. <laughs> oh, I work for a truck company now. I can say whatever I want. <laughs> they got some time. <laughs> oh, <Lord>. <laughs> 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 okay. We went from. I love how we went from Harry Potter to. <laughs>
I like, don't know what's going on with the kids. Dude, just trauma, dude. Dude, talking about it. Dick on every step. Dealing with emotional too. Okay, we're gonna turn to children. I just assume they're looking for... Children, okay? Why would they look for that movie? Oh, no. I don't know, maybe they're like... Wow, this, uh, this train is getting deep. <laughs> this has gone off-road. This has gone off-road. Moving on. Alright, so we should disguise ourselves as yes. normal-looking children. <laughs> as completely PG movie-rated children. As completely average, normal-looking children. Nothing happened to be entered out. I mean, um, it's up to my group if they want to do if they want to help out. I mean, I don't know. I, I don't think me or Dartham turning into children would change how much we stick out. Oh, no, Juan's really good at it. Oh, Juan can make you look like anything. Don't worry. Well, I propose at least having some people who are spotters. Someone who's like on roof. Maybe I could go and, uh, you know, not be a child. I, I got a good eye. I like the idea of us splitting up. If there's too many of us, it might look suspicious. Yeah. If there's, if there's, ten, if there's nine kids, this is going to be... Uh... <laughs> It's gonna be a lot. He <laughs> dare uh, I could turn into a child, a normal looking average child. I think that we should um, intermingle our parties, you know, get to know one another. That is a great idea. What's your name again? Uh, Leon. I'm... Hi, Leon. He, he could be right. a child. It looks like one anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so we'll take me and Juan. We'll take uh, uh, Leon and Groot. We'll all go be children, and then you guys spot. Wait, I'm not going to be get to be a totally average-looking child. <sighs> You're gonna uh, make me spot. You're way too old now to be an average-looking child. Just, I'm sorry. You're like forty-something now. <laughs> I'm I'm still fun. I'm I'm still fun. I'm I mean, just on speed ranger rocks. If, if you could turn us into anyone, I think it'd be realistic that the children have an adult. I don't know. Give him a name or something like Chris Hansen or something like that. Yes, <laughs> that's a good. And, and we should be rat heads. We should all be rat heads. Yes. I'm telling you, felt very sick. The taste is <laughs> good. Oh god. Oh, okay. <laughs> So, okay, so who's going to be the average children again? It okay, Luke and Luke, Leon Juan. and Juan yeah. and Dartham. Those four? Leon. Mm -hmm. Okay, so those four. Okay. And then the rest of the group are just going to... Snap. Are we going to be spotters? Probably. Spotters. So mm -hmm. yes. are you guys going to this playground? Is that what's happening? Yes. Yep. So you guys are going to go to the playground, you're going to play in the playground, and then the rest of you all are are going to be outside of the playground watching? Like, like hiding in the bushes. I do like the idea of <laughs> one person just being an adult that maybe brought the children. Mm -hmm. Pasha, Pasha Cook, she's good at uh, children. children. I, maybe. I do have 50 of them. Mm -hmm. so. That's quite a bit of children. There's only Jesus four of us. Christ. How do you deal with 50? Oh, well, I, I have them in batches of nine. How like do you deal with nine? <laughs> <laughs> Pardon? <laughs> Sorry, I'll be myself. Okay, so... Alright, so you guys will head over to the... To the playground. Yeah, 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 yeah. You'll transform into little kids. <laughs> the four will transform into little kids with Pasha as the nanny, I guess. Yes. Okay. Um, and yeah, let's do a little bit of role playing. So go ahead. The four children plus Pasha. Like, what are you guys saying, what, doing what, while you're in the playground? Like? Yeah. What do you got? Yeah. If you want to describe your average-looking children. <laughs> 
We all have red hair. So I just picture uh, we all look like Sam. Sam, just we're going to just put your baby, your child <laughs> picture right here. Yeah, no, 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 no. Hello there. Oh, no. <laughs> I can't do this again. Average looking children. <laughs> and we're playing the swings. <laughs> so these four children, I, I guess Juan directed everybody. These four children are actually half of an octoplet, of identical octuplets, and Juan happens to be number eight. So everyone oh, else is seven, six, and five. I'll let everybody else decide who's seven, six, and five. I'll um, be seven. You'll be seven. Who's six and who's five? I'll be um, five because I'm the oldest. I guess you're five, and okay, and and Leon will be six, but Juan is eight, and so eight, seven, six, and five. That's easy for names. So yeah, and Pasha, you're babysitting these four because. The parents can only handle four at a time, so you're taking care of these four and taking them to the playground. So, you five role play right now. Go on, Clem. <laughs> Asha has made you walk, holding each other's hands, and kind of like, t like no one's getting lost. Everyone is getting to this playground. Find your buddy. Yes. Yeah. Oh, what a nice oh. today. <laughs> yeah, the weather's really nice. <laughs> um, One of the Leon, other children, please talk. Leon sort of uh, nudges the others. No, you have to be more childlike. Right, I'm I, childlike, yeah. Is, oh, let me try to be a little more like a child. Uh, this is more like another character I play somewhere else. <laughs> This is oh, like scary. Scary. How did I end up with you four idiots as brothers? Oh, I don't know how it goes. Oh, we love you too, five. <laughs> Evan, shut up. All right, okay. Uh, so I'm going to not attractively at all go pick up this ball. <laughs> <laughs> Realize that his channel's getting suspended. I said not attractive like at all. Totally normal. Picking this Wait, ball just, up. Hawk just nonsense up the whole thing. The whole thing. <laughs> Have have mature only eighteen plus viewers, viewers can see this. Sign in to view. Very normal, like pick up the ball like a normal child. <laughs> this part's only going to be available on Patreon. I'm paying for it. You can't do it. Okay. okay. This is for a, yeah. This content is for a different website. <laughs> Prison one. <laughs> <laughs>